Alright, so the first movie that I'm going to be watching today on the last day of the challenge. Uh, my daughter is home today from school. It's Saturday. Uh, so she didn't have to go to school today. So just right now they're having breakfast and she asked me if she can watch a movie after she's done with her breakfast. And I said, sure, why not? And she chose Ghostbusters. As you can see, it is 8.15 a.m. and it's Saturday, day seven. All right, so Ghostbusters just ended. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the other movie, but first, I'm gonna get myself something to eat. I'm just gonna get a bowl of cereal. Uh, yeah, I'm really trying to keep this day moving. The next movie that I'm gonna watch is a underrated movie. Uh, a lot of people don't know about this movie, and it's definitely one of my favorite mafia movies of all time, and that's a Bronx Tale. This is Robert De Niro's uh, first uh, directed movie uh, written by Chaz. I forget his last name. Uh, Chaz Pal Palminteri. Palminteri. Chaz is a Broadway writer and actor. He does a lot of live theater, even though he's been in a lot of movies, like Running Scared that I saw yesterday. This movie is about a young man in the Bronx who is surrounded, who grew up around the mafia in his neighborhood. And his father, who is a hardworking, honest man, Robert De Niro, is trying to keep him away from that lifestyle that he's slowly falling into. So he has two father figures, uh, Chaz and Robert De Niro. Chaz plays Sonny, the mafia boss of the Bronx, and Robert De Niro is his real dad. So he has to struggle between those two lives and has to struggle with who's right and who's wrong. Of course, there is a life lesson in this movie, but it's really, really good, you guys. Robert De Niro did an awesome job directing this film. If you guys haven't seen it and you like mafia movies, this is definitely one to watch. Okay, it is 10.05 a.m. Saturday, still day seven, the final day of the challenge. I got my breakfast right here and I'm going to start watching A Bronx Tale. Okay, so the movie is narrated by Robert De Niro's son. He's telling his life story being raised in the Bronx. And the movie starts off with him as a very, very young kid. And right down the street is where the gangsters hang out, the mob. And Sonny Chaz, the mob boss of the Bronx. And he lives upstairs over a bar that they hang out in and his dad is a bus driver, an honest, good working uh, man. He earns a honest living and tries to keep his son away from the gangsters. So his life makes a dramatic change whenever he's hanging out outside with his friends and he witnesses Sonny murder. He witnesses him shoot some guy down the street and uh, the cops get there, uh, Robert De Niro shows up, he grabs his son, drags him upstairs and hides him. But the cops get to the apartment, they take the kid outside because they know he was a witness and they ask him if he knows who shot him. And the kid says that he saw everything. So they line up all these gangsters uh, right in front of the bar, in front of the whole entire neighborhood. And every, it's a small neighborhood, everybody knows everything, everybody knows what goes on but nobody ever says anything. So the cops ask... Uh, Collegero, the Raul De Niro's son, uh, one at a time, did he murder? Uh, was he the guy? Was he the guy? Was he the guy? So he finally gets to Sonny and he asks, Is this the guy that shot him? And he's looking right at Sonny and Sonny's looking right at him and he says, No. And that's when Sonny realized that maybe there is something in this kid that I can trust. And that's where their relationship starts, their friendship. So right after that, uh, they start hanging out behind Robert De Niro's back, of course, and their friendship grows and grows. And whenever he gets older, uh, Robert De Niro struggles with getting him out of that lifestyle, trying to get his son back. Can I get this plan? You can be anything you want to be. Remember, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't do the right thing, then nothing happens. But when you do right, guess what? Good things happen. You hear me? 
right. Let's go for that ice cream. Yeah, good. Take a lesson, people. Lesson of life. I forgot to mention that it's the 60s. Italians live on one side, black people live on the other side, and they do not get along. With that in mind, collegial falls for a black girl. All right, so I just got done watching A Bronx Tale. Really, really good mafia movie. Really good father and son movie. Like I said earlier, this was Robert De Niro's uh, first movie that he directed. He did an awesome job. Really, really enjoyed this movie. If you guys are into mafia movies, if you guys are into family dramatic movies, this movie is definitely a movie you, that you guys have to watch. It's really funny, it's very dramatic, very, very interesting to see the two sides of it's very interesting to see the two sides of these worlds. You got the mafia world and you got the, the family world. You have a father fighting for his son because he can't decide uh, right from wrong. And he looks up to his father at the same time he looks up to this mafia boss. So while watching this movie, I couldn't help myself but to think about all the great mafia movies that we have. And uh, I'm sure you guys can agree that Martin Scorsese is the filmmaker of mafia movies. Everything he does is great, but when it comes to mafia movies, gangster movies, he really knows what he's doing. A lot of it is because he was born and raised in New York and he was surrounded by that lifestyle. Uh, he was never part of that lifestyle, but he was surrounded by it. Which leads me to the next movie that I'm going to watch, and that's Mean Streets. Mean Streets is an awesome, awesome mafia movie. It's not really a mafia movie, but it's considered to be just because it's, it kind of touches on that lifestyle and on and it touches on uh, mafia situations. This was the first movie that uh, really gave Martin Scorsese a name. And the reason a lot of critics liked it is because it's very, very simple and you see how much hard work Martin Scorsese put into it and how much passion he had for this movie. And you can always tell when a filmmaker has that, you can see it in their work. A personal reason of mine of why I like this movie is because you can really see the style that Martin Scorsese has. And this movie came out in the mid 70s and you can see the style in this movie, the same style that he has now and it hasn't changed at all. It's sort of like he wasn't even experimenting. He was born with a gift and he used it and he still uses it up to this day, which is what gives him an amazing name in the film industry. So it's about 12 o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and watch it. Okay, so it's 12.03 p.m. Saturday, day seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and watch Main Streets. I always really like the artwork and the menu. It's the same artwork as the cover, but I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I absolutely love the artwork. All right, so the movie's playing right now, and I'm not gonna pause it. I've seen it before, and I also wanna finish the challenge, but I'm just gonna make the kids some lunch right now real quick. And uh, it's a really, really nice day, you guys. Uh, I don't know where the rest of you live at, but over here, we've been hitting like 90, 100 degrees, like every day, and today, is awesome it feels like it's 75 degrees outside it's breezy it's it feels really really nice so i was thinking about taking a break and taking the kids outside for lunch uh i think they'll really like to play at least for a good half an hour and eat some lunch so yeah i think i'm gonna do that so uh as soon as i'm done making lunch then i'll pause it i'll show you guys what time it is too and i will take a half an hour break and then i'll come back inside and finish it Okay. Rachel, is that a good lunch? Yeah, no. Hey, show everybody your cup. Let me see your cup. Star Wars. Let me see it. Hold it up. Nice cup. That wasn't me. No, are you having a good lunch? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Which cup do you have? Thor. Yeah, I like your points. shirt too. You have a really cool shirt. No, look. Look. Sam. What about you? Huh? Uh, Are you having a good lunch? Uh, oh, it's serious. 
Why so serious? Okay, so while the kids finish up their lunch and uh, finish playing around, uh, I want to talk about Mean Streets. It's not exactly a mafia movie, even though it it deals a lot with uh, Harvey Cattell's character uh, trying to make a name for himself. The mafia is involved in the movie. You see uh, really young guys who are just trying to make a name for themselves in the neighborhood in, in New York. Harvey Cattell's character, uh, he is involved in the mafia, sort of. Uh, he is sort of a gangster. Martin Scorsese really made this movie uh, not necessarily about him, but the movie is based around him and his character. Uh, he's trying to make a name for himself in the neighborhood and with the mob boss, you know, trying, trying to find his way in there. Uh, he also has a lot of uh, personal issues with uh, who he wants to be in life, what exactly it is that he wants. <laughs> And, uh, and religion. Religion plays a huge part in this movie. Harvey Cattell's character is always questioning what he's doing, whether it's right or wrong, and uh, what God thinks about it, and whether or not he could end up in hell. Robert De Niro is Johnny Boy, Harvey Cattell's best friend, uh, and is also part of the small crew that Harvey Cattell has. Um, but Johnny Boy, Robert De Niro, uh, owes this other gangster a lot of money and he's getting deeper and deeper in debt and this other guy does have a temper uh, he wants to get paid he wants his money and he's getting really tired of dealing with Raul De Niro Johnny Boy because Harvey Cattell is trying to make a name for himself and try to involve himself in the mafia world uh, he decides to help Johnny Boy out and try to deal with the situation and try to talk to the guy that he owes money to. There's also a girl involved that Harvey Cattell's character is seeing secretly uh, and there's a reason why. There's also a mob boss that Harvey Cattell is trying to get closer to uh, simply because you know this is the kind of lifestyle that he wants. So there's a lot of different things that are going on in this movie and I think that's what makes it really really good is that it's not just focused on one thing. Uh, it's focused on different things, uh, friendships, relationships, uh, religion, certain things that a lot of people can relate to. This is also the first movie that Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro did together. Robert De Niro's acting is fantastic. He, his character is simply a troublemaker, a, uh, re the, re the rebellious type. He really doesn't care about anything, just wants to do his own thing. And uh, that gets him into a lot of trouble. So if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm going to finish up out here in a little bit and then I'll head back inside. Alright you guys, it is 2.10 p.m. It's still day 7. And I'll go ahead and get back to Mean Streets. I only have about 20 to 30 minutes left. So I'll go ahead and finish this and I'll see you guys in a little bit. The girl that Harvey Cattell is with, Teresa, is her apartment, not her actual apartment, but like the actual building, the hallway and the stairs, is that the same apartment from Taxi Driver in the end? I think it is. Okay, you guys, so I just got done watching Main Streets, and I'm telling you, if you guys have not seen it, and you appreciate movies for what they are, and you appreciate filmmakers for where they came from, you got to watch this movie. So now that I'm done with it, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next movie, and you can obviously see behind me that it's Another Day in Paradise. Uh, this movie stars James Woods and I believe that this is definitely a underrated movie. Not only is it underrated and pretty much unknown, but it's definitely a movie that I believe James Woods is amazing in. This movie is one of my favorite James Woods movies. I think his acting is phenomenal and he, he knocks it out of the park as usual. Another Day in Paradise. James Woods, his girlfriend or his wife, I don't remember. Uh, they're con artists, they're thieves, and they're junkies. And uh, they come across this uh, young man and James Woods becomes very close with him. Uh, they become really good friends, they become really close, their friendship grows. James Woods' character decides to teach him the ropes, teach him how to steal, and teach him how to be a con artist and certain things like that. And, uh, and he, this young guy that he pretty much takes under his wing, has a girlfriend and she decides to come along or he invites her to come along and she becomes friends with James Wood's wife. Uh, so, the four, so the four of them start to learn certain things from each other and 
uh, not only do they learn things about each other, but their drug habits and their other habits begin to get worse. So their friendship gets worse. Uh, it's a really good drama, really good uh, thriller. This film is directed by Larry Clark. He's also a very underrated uh, filmmaker. He hasn't really done anything big. This would probably be the biggest movie that he's done, uh, in my opinion. Uh, he also did Bully, which a lot of people really like. Not the documentary, a movie that came out a few years back. And, uh, and then he also did Kids, which I believe was his first movie. You can sort of tell by his style that he's an independent filmmaker. And uh, his movies also deal a lot with... Uh, and his movies also deal a lot with uh, broken down people, emotional people, and uh, the dark side of their lives, if you will. Uh, pretty much addictions or people with problems. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what time it is and I'll start the movie. Okay you guys, so it's 2.44 p.m. It's still Saturday, which means it's the final day. And uh, this next movie that I'm going to be watching is number 46, which means that whenever I'm done with this movie, I will only have uh, four more movies left. Today, I was supposed, today I'm supposed to do eight and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this movie is number four for today, which makes it number 46 on the list uh, for this week. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be done, you guys. So as soon as, uh, so I'll go ahead and put the movie in right now and start watching it. Okay, so while the movie plays, I'm going to grab myself a snack. I'm not really in the mood for lunch right now. So I will get a snack. My wife went grocery shopping recently and got me some Cheetos jalapenos, one of my favorite snacks of all time. I'm also gonna get myself a water. Oh, by the way, um, Bobby just killed a, uh, a security guard and all he wanted was some quarters. Nothing good ever comes from illegal activities. Another Day in Paradise has to be the most sarcastic title for a movie in movie history. <laughs> Alright you guys, it's 4.24 p.m. Saturday and uh, I just got done watching Another Day in Paradise and I have one little tiny problem. I don't know what to watch next. Uh, that was movie four so I only have four left and uh, I don't want to stay up too late tonight but I will no matter what happens I'll stay up as late as I have to to finish this challenge but I gotta think of what to watch next I honestly have no idea you guys none whatsoever uh, hopefully I think of something quick okay you guys it actually only took me like two minutes at first I was really really worried and I started looking around and uh, recently I bought a movie if you guys saw I think movie hunt 4 it was I haven't seen it since I bought it I've seen it many many times before like on TV and uh, I did have a DVD copy many many years ago but I recently bought it on blu-ray I haven't even seen it since I bought it and I keep meaning to and I forgot all about it but that movie is American Psycho a definite classic Christian Bell William Dafoe Christian Bell is a serial killer um, Patrick Bateman I think his name is uh, he's the American Psycho uh, it, I know the cover looks like a horror if you guys haven't seen it but this movie is not a horror uh, I, I tell I tell people all the time that this movie is not a horror it's actually a comedy at least I think so a lot of people that have seen it agree with me this movie is like the definition of dry humor of um, dark humor. It's very entertaining, especially seeing Christian Bell in this character uh, trying to be something that is not. So I'll go ahead and make this my next movie and put it in and watch it. All right, you guys, so it's 4.29 p.m. and I'm gonna go ahead and start watching American Psycho. I love the classical music that they play throughout the whole entire movie. It just makes the whole experience even more funny. I have a question for you guys. Do you like Phil Collins? The, uh, the movie's almost over, you guys. 
he just went on a killing spree. But uh, I'm starting to get hungry. It's about 5.30 almost. The kids are hungry, so I'm gonna make a pizza because that's what I'm in the mood for. One thing I've noticed is that during this uh, time off, I've been eating really, really bad. And I've been laying around, sitting around all day, every day, so I've probably gained a few pounds. All right, you guys, not only is my dinner ready, but the movie is over. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick out the next one, show you guys what time it is, and start it. Okay, you guys, I just got done watching um, American Psycho with Christian Bale. If you guys haven't seen it, you definitely have to. It's one of the funniest and disturbing movies I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And if you haven't seen it on Blu-ray, I uh, recommend you do because the transfer looks amazing. It, it really does look really good. Uh, it makes a huge difference from the DVD. Uh, definitely suggest you guys buy it. So the next movie that I'm going to watch is Burn After Reading. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Ethan and Joel Cohen fan. I think those two brothers are absolutely amazing when it comes to filmmaking. They definitely know what they're doing when it comes to writing and directing and producing. Those two together are like the perfect duo when it comes to filmmaking. My favorite movie from the Coen brothers has to be No Country for Old Man. Uh, a lot of people don't consider it a western but I do and in my opinion I think that's the best western in the whole entire world. Not only do the Coen brothers make drama movies but I feel like a lot of their movies have a lot of comedy in them. Doesn't matter if it's a, a thriller or a drama or a horror, a lot of their movies do have a comedy side to them. Burn After Reading and The Big Lebowski have to be two of the most funniest movies I've ever seen from the Coen brothers. Uh, it's really hard to explain this one because there's a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of different characters but they all are tied into one. So I'll go ahead and put it in and I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about it and I'll show you what time it is. Alright you guys, it is 6.20 p.m. Saturday day seven last day of the challenge uh i started last sunday uh i believe it was like what time was it it was like between 8 and 8 30 i think it was which technically means i have till tomorrow morning at the same time but hopefully if things do go according to plan i should be done by midnight so i'll go ahead and put this movie in start it and uh continue with the challenge George Clooney and his wife are really good friends with John Malkovich and his wife. John, Malko John Malkovich works for the CIA and the movie starts off with him getting fired from the CIA and decides that and decides that now that he's fired he can write a memoir about his life and his career. John Malkovich's wife wants a divorce and is secretly seeing George Clooney. George Clooney's wife does not know. John Malkovich's wife, who is having an affair with George Clooney, uh, tells her lawyer that she wants to get a divorce. Her lawyer tells her not to let him know yet that she needs to get all the financial information first. So while he's out, she goes to his computer and decides to take all the information that he has on there. By the way, George Clooney has a sex addiction. Agent. Accidentally one day while she's at the gym, it falls out of her bag and stays there. Someone finds it. That leads us to Brad Pitt and Frances McDormand's uh, characters. Brad Pitt and Frances McDormand work at a gym and they find this CD or this file that has all of this information and they think it's something very important because it obviously is government information. By the way, Frances McDermott desperately wants to get body surgery. She is not happy with herself and is also part of online dating. So after Brad Pitt and Frances McDermott find this file, from John Malkovich, they decide to return it for reward money because they think it's something very important. Little do they know, it's only a memoir that he's writing about his life. That sort of backfires and then George Clooney thinks that people are following him. So that's pretty much just the beginning of the story. It seems like a huge drama. Uh, the music in this movie is absolutely awesome because it makes the whole entire movie 
seem like a drama and seem like a thriller and a dramatic adventure when in reality it sort of is but it's a huge comedy it's the funniest thing the movie just gets funnier and funnier the more these stories all come together and mess each other up it's, it's the funniest thing ever you guys have to watch it all right so this movie will have your head spinning i mean there's so many twist and turns and it's it's unbelievable it's hilarious and it's really really funny it's a great great story i actually think that the coen brothers are <laughs> insane for coming up with this movie uh or with this story it's pretty much eight o'clock uh i'm gonna go ahead and put the kids to bed i'm gonna go ahead and help my wife put the kids to bed and then i'll uh i'll show you guys what time it is and i'll watch the next one all right, so two more, you guys, and the challenge will be over. Okay, you guys, so it's almost 8.30. Our kids are in bed, and I'm getting ready to watch the next movie. The next movie that I'm going to be watching is The Professional, starring Natalie Portman and Gary Oldman. Natalie Portman is very, very young in this movie, and you can already tell that she's going to have an amazing career ahead of her. She is very talented and you can definitely see it in this movie. Natalie Portman is a little girl who uh, lives with a dysfunctional family. Her dad owes Gary Oldman, this cop, a lot of money. Gary Oldman, the police officer, is tired of waiting for Natalie Portman's father and decides to just go in there and murder the whole entire family. The professional, also known as Leon, aka the cleaner, is neighbor to Natalie Portman and is also a professional assassin that works for the mafia. The cleaner, Leon, has a very close relationship with Natalie Portman in the apartment. They always talk and he knows about her family and how they're very dysfunctional and not nice to her and he doesn't like that. So he ends up actually saving her life whenever Gary Oldman and his friends go in there to murder her whole entire family and he actually takes her in. While he has her in in his apartment, she asks him for help on getting revenge for her whole entire family. And that's pretty much the plot of the story. I'm not going to tell you the end because there is an awesome ending to this movie. And uh, the second half is actually really, really cool. Uh, you see him teaching her certain things. Uh, not just about being an assassin, but about life and growing up and things like that. And I've always liked the... Uh, obsession that he has with his plan it just goes to show that he really respects life even though he takes it all right you guys it is 8 25 p.m. it's still day seven I'm gonna go ahead and start the professional the first few minutes of the movie is not just the introduction of the movie but the introduction to what Leon the professional aka the cleaner does for a living He's an assassin. The movie starts off with his darkest side. I always liked how the movie isn't exactly about what he does for a living. He is an assassin, but he is the most gentle, softest assassin there is. They almost make him seem as a very fragile person, a very caring person. And it's funny because the little girl, Natalie Portman, uh, that he has taken in because her family is dead, has been murdered. She's actually the opposite almost. She's a little harder than he is, a little colder than he is. So they actually sort of balance each other out. Gary Oldman, this is definitely one of his best performances in a film, hands down. Okay, right now, Gary Oldman is uh, talking to Natalie Portman, Matilda. He just found her in the bathroom getting ready to kill him or she was going to try to kill him. And it's time for a snack. What do you guys think? I don't even know. I don't even have to think about it. Cheetos jalapenos, of course. It's not like I ate a whole entire bag earlier, so I might as well eat some more. Best chips in the world, you guys. Best chips in the world. All right, you guys, it's about 10.15. Uh, the professional just ended. 
and I'm telling you guys, it's it's a really good movie. It's a classic. It kind of it's one of those movies that a uh, movie lover is gonna love, and it's also gonna get pissed off at the fact that it's not a famous famous movie because it's that good. But the time has come, you guys. The last movie. Uh, of the challenge and uh, I've been thinking really hard about it this whole entire week what movie I should watch uh, for it to be my last movie of the challenge number 50 and to be honest with you I couldn't think of one I couldn't think of a movie to watch for the last movie for it to be number 50 but uh, during but during this whole entire movie the professional I've been thinking really hard about it and I figured uh, I would watch Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Psycho to me has uh, a certain significance. It was, it is the very first, uh, it is the very first Alfred Hitchcock movie that I had ever seen. I saw it, uh, I think it was like my freshman year. I was like 15 or 16 whenever I first saw it and I absolutely fell in love with it and I fell in love with it during like the first half an hour uh, what made me love the movie was the camera angles I knew who Alfred Hitchcock was just because I had already uh, gained knowledge of movies but I had never seen any of his movies and then my parents got cable for the first time and we had TCM I, couldn't, I can't remember if it was TCM or AMC the channel but I remember staying up late. It started like at 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. And uh, and I was really excited to watch it. I told myself, no matter what happens, I cannot forget. I'm going to stay up and I'm going to watch this movie. Because I really want to know this guy's work and what makes him so special. And, uh, the, and the trailer for Psycho was coming on like all the time and I was like there's there has to be something interesting about this movie I went in knowing a lot of things about it I went in knowing that it was black and white I knew it was gonna be an old movie I knew all of that and even though I knew that I still loved it and after I watched it uh, that's when I learned the story behind Psycho about uh, Alfred Hitchcock's struggle to make it and how proud he was of himself and how much pressure he was under him and his wife and that made me even love the movie even more so before I keep on rambling on and on and waste time I am going to go ahead and watch number 50 you guys uh, before I watch it thank you guys so much for joining me if you watched all of my videos thank you for if you watched all of my videos thank you very very much I'm gonna go ahead and pop this movie in and end this challenge do any of you have mother issues? Let them see what kind of a person I am. I'm not even going to swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why she wouldn't even have a fly. <laughs> Alright you guys, I uh, just finished Psycho, which concludes uh, 50 movies in one week, 7 days. I did it you guys. Uh, it was really really hard to do. Um, very very exhausting even though I love movies. It does take a lot of energy out of you. But uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys what time it is and uh, yeah. That will be the conclusion, the end of this whole entire thing. So uh, let me go ahead and show you guys what time it is. All right, it is 12.07 a.m. Sunday. Thank you guys a lot for uh, joining me, I guess. Uh, for all of you that watched the other videos, thank you so much for uh, for watching and for joining. And uh, who knows, I might be doing some other challenges. 
I am going to take a break for a while, though, that's for sure. I got to let the family have some more TV time, <laughs> TV time that I took away.